Well, good evening, brothers and sisters. The hour is upon us. God has granted us yet again another opportunity to grow in his word, to grow in relationship, to go deeper in our spirituality. And so tonight, as we gather in this virtual space, our minds are focused on him. Our hearts are open to receive from him. I pray that since last time we met together on last Thursday, that you've seen the hand of God operating in your life and through your life, and that you've been very conscious to do some reflective thinking on what has transpired in your life. I always want to remind you to take a moment to do reflective thinking on how far you have gone, how far you have come from, to see how your relationship with God has grown over the years and over the time. Who you were last year will not be the same person. You ought to be, you ought to grow stronger in your faith. Your spiritual muscles ought to be stronger, have more endurance. You ought to be able to put up with things. I won't say put up, I say it this way, endure things longer than you did years ago. That doesn't mean you tolerate certain situations. I'm saying being able to endure things when it seems like the deck, the deck is stacked against you. You know deep down in your spirit that God is making all things work together for good to them who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. And I'm excited tonight to know that God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you and God has predestined you to walk in the things of God to walk in the things of God, to have the heart of God, to have the mind of Christ. That is why we study and we grow that our minds will be more like Christ. To let that mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. We're going to pray and we're going to take our attention to the text tonight. Join me, if you will, in this word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this moment, this hour, as we gather in this virtual space. Give us, Father God, the sensitivity that we need to hear your voice. God, drive back all blockage, everything that will try to hinder, God, the word from going forth tonight. Father, we speak to every issue where there's doubt, where there's sickness, where there's frustration, where there's depression. For we know the interests of your word bring life, light, and liberty. Set those who are captive free tonight. Heal, God, the brokenhearted. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Again, um, we're excited to have you here tonight. On um, last week, we concluded our series, Opportunity is in the Eye of the Beholder. We concluded on John chapter 5 with the man who was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. And over the years, since the history of Christianity, preachers, Bible students, uh, theologians, scholars, we have we have dragged this man across the, the cold. We've given him a hard time. We've said things such as he should have crawled his way to the pool where the stirring of the water was. He should have sat there in the pool. He should have hobbled his way into the pool. And we blame him for his plight in life. And while he contributed to sitting there for 38 years and while he was blaming other people, which he did, what I like or what we found last week some to like about this man is for 38 years, he kept showing up. He was consistent. He was persistent. And many people quit after one day for 38 years. He kept showing up, but he was closer to what he was expecting, but never arrived there until Jesus showed up on the scene. And what I'm saying to you before we get into our text tonight, when you are consistent, I want to say that the enemy is out after your consistency. When you are consistent and you're persistent, um, God will show up. For he who thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. You got to be thirsty enough. Mm. <laughs> Those who hunger after righteousness uh, shall be fed. You, you got to be hungry enough. And when you get hungry enough and you get thirsty enough, Jesus will show up. And so we tonight we pivot to a new series um, tonight in our series tonight that I want to us to begin um, is the battle between your ears. The battle between your ears. Um, I, I want to begin uh, by saying a few things to you. Um, and I guess we'll begin our first our first night uh, with in this series. We just tired it tearing down the stronghold, tearing down the stronghold. Um, 
Paul writes, and we'll have a few scriptures that we'll, we'll go through on tonight. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, Paul writes these words. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I read that again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So a stronghold, the battle between your ears, tearing down these strongholds, um, when we consider what strongholds are, because in this day and age in which we live in, the terminology and the language that we use often uh, may put some people or, or cause some people not to fully understand when we talk about strongholds. So if you will, for a moment, let us break this down. Um, a stronghold is simply incorrect thinking. A stronghold is incorrect thinking thinking it is not just incorrect thinking but it is a pattern of incorrect thinking and so strongholds have the tendency has the capacity to be able to affect how we feel affect how we how we behave strongholds um, strongholds plays a huge a huge part of our spiritual freedom and so uh, you can confess christ and i won't get into the argument tonight but may still be battling with strongholds because once you confess christ there's more to living a free life more to stay in free christ saves our spirit doesn't save our flesh let me say that loud and clear for those who are in the back of the sanctuary. Jesus came not to save your flesh, but to save your spirit. Our spirits were dead to God. And so a believer, a stronghold is something that takes place in our mind. It is a pattern, a systematic way of thinking. And when you think a certain way, it has the tendency to cause you to feel a certain way, to behave a certain way. I want to say this to somebody tonight who's listening in on this broadcast. Maybe your feelings have to do with your systematic way of thinking. The reason you're feeling that way about a situation is because of what you have told yourself. Talk to me tonight. And so strongholds often then, they're not just a systematic way or pattern of thinking, but strongholds, if you if you could, if you can handle this, strongholds um, are built usually upon deception in error. I want to say usually strongholds are built all the time upon deception and error or erroneous information. And often these erroneous and deceptive information begin to create strongholds in our mind and therefore binding us in a certain state of mind, a certain state of emotion, a certain state of behavior. And watch the strongholds often are attributed to the environment in which we live in, the environment in which we hang out with, the environment in which we keep company with. And so those around us can add building blocks to the strongholds. Um, I witnessed in my lifetime, people being bound by strongholds that they have created them Sales. This is what happened. Strongholds are like a fortified city where you, the military would build up walls, cement walls, stone walls to keep the outside forces from getting in. But at the same time, while these walls are built up, nothing on the inside could get out. What are you saying to me, preacher? Um, this is what I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you that, um, 
In order to deal with strongholds, you need to be able to have new information. When you have a blockage up or walls up, new information cannot come in. And old information stay in. And so um, we're going to go deeper here shortly, just telling you about strongholds. And so oftentimes what happens is we have built a fortified city. We have blocked ourselves in in an erroneous or deception way of thinking. And the most dangerous thing about it is we have believed that erroneous and deceptive way of thinking. And so we're not letting nothing in new while we're retaining and holding on to the old. But God tonight wants to bring some new information to you because with new information, you have a tendency or you have the opportunity to destroy the stronghold. And so let's go deeper in our study tonight. And so a stronghold can be based off of faulty and erroneous ideas or things that come into our mind. And so um, I want to give you a few scriptures um, here tonight. I think that will be a blessing to you. Um, and I believe that it will help set the captive the captives free. And so let's 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 take our attention how strongholds also form. I'm here in Jeremiah 17 um, in verse 9. Um, in verse 9, in Jeremiah 17, 9 said, The heart is deceitfully above all things, not some things, all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And, and you said, what does that have to do with strongholds? Everything. Because strongholds are created of erroneous thinking, deceptive information, but also we have the tendency or have the ability, hear me and hear me well, to lie to ourselves. Mm. That's hard to swallow. We have the ability to lie to ourselves, to deceive Ourselves. And so Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitfully above all things. It's wicked. It's beyond cure. And so our, our conscience before coming to Christ was seared, seared with sin. We had no, uh, we had no way to allow God into our mind because our minds was bent towards evil continuously Jesus came in to destroy that wall that was created and so we have the tendency then to rebuild the walls that Jesus came to destroy and so these strongholds um, become very difficult and sometimes appear to be impossible to tear down why are they so impossible to tear down? Because when you're trying to tear them down, the demons continue to try to rebuild the walls that are torn down. You remember in the gospel where Jesus says that when um, an evil spirit is cast out, it you need to make sure that you feel the empty space. Because if you don't feel the empty space, he brings back seven more wickier spirits. He brings back seven more wickier spirits. Why? To rebuild the stronghold and so when you get delivered from erroneous and deceptive thinking you have to make sure you start having good thinking you can't have um you can't have an idle mind idle way of thinking if you're not putting new information in what happens is you go back to a worse situation a worse situation um and so tonight again i want to emphasize the real battle is what's going on between your ears the real battle is what's going on between your ears so i want you to join me again um, about how these demons work or how these strongholds work in regards to its rebuilding when you're trying to tear them down they continue to come to try to rebuild um in your mind space in your mind space say this with me as we turn to matthews 12 and 45 i am what i think and what i think that I am. Say it again. I am what I think and what I think that I am. I'm in Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, um, 
And in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, the scriptures read, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, stronghold, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and find up, trying to create a stronghold in someone else's mind. Then he said, I will return into my house, the place where I'm comfortable with, the place where I had walls to hold me in from whence I came out. See, he was inside of something, a stronghold. And when he has come, he finds it empty, no new information, no new thought. He's found it empty, swept, and garnished. He left it, but nothing new was put in. This is some good stuff. Verse 45 said, Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Uh, and so when you don't put new information in, your condition becomes worse. Now, now watch this. I started off in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, and I did that for a reason to get us here. Um, as we go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, we pick up. Uh, watch this, what happens here in the text. So we have demons who work against us um, to to continue to create these strongholds um, but watch here what happens here in the text the bible talks about in second corinthians 10 4 and 5 the bible says this to us it says casting down imaginations casting down imagination uh, and so the bible speaks about imaginations what are imaginations? I just told you the heart is deceptively uh, wicked, wicked, desperately wicked. I told you deception is, well, strongholds are based off deception and erroneous information. And so our imagination, we create stories. We lie to ourselves and create stories. I, I, I've seen people who create stories and they are living in a bondage of the story that they imagine in their minds. It never happened, but they told themselves this happened. Wow, they told themselves something happened to them. But the Bible says we ought to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And so these imaginations begin to become strongholds. Why? Because we meditate on what we have imagined. Oh, help me. And whatever we meditate, meditate on begin to form in our minds. And that is known as imagination. As you, you are what you think, and as you think you are, when you begin to ponder on what you believe has happened to you, you begin to create strongholds in your life, and hardly no one can pull you out of that fortified city that you keep telling yourself. That's one of the greatest tactics of Satan, is deception. When Satan deceives you to believe that you're right, that's what deception is. Deception says, uh, I believe the erroneous information and I'm not willing to accept new information. And so how do we overcome these strongholds? How do we overcome these strongholds? Paul says it here in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Because these strongholds, the imaginations, have to be cast down. And here's the answer to it, Romans 12 and two are you ready Romans 12 and 2 says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may approve that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and so as our minds are being renewed we can prove we can discern what is good we're able to see what is erroneous we're able to see what is deceptive we're able to see when we are lying to ourselves um, we're able to see what is the good acceptable and perfect will of god and so these things are some of the very things that strongholds rise against new information and so when new information come in the stronghold walls begin to fall down and so this is the process of coming out of the stronghold of tearing down the stronghold you really want to come out of a stronghold you really want your mind to be set free well here's the process you have to cleanse the way that you think you have to cleanse the way that you think 
Your mind has to be renewed. Again, a stronghold is a fortified city that keeps in old information and blocks out new information. Here's the process of tearing down stronghold. You receive new information. New, not new information for the sake of just information, but godly information. Once you receive that information, information leads to revelation. Let me say that again. Information leads to revelation. And where there is revelation, there's the process of transformation. Jesus asked the disciples in Matthew chapter 16, who do men say that I am? Because Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, I'm walking with you all these years. Um, and you all still don't get the picture. Remember what Nathaniel said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, I've been with you all this time and you don't recognize who I am. But in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? And they went through this plethora of who others are saying Jesus are, or who Jesus is. But Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And watch what happens. Watch this, how new information comes in, how revelation come in, and how transformation take place. Um, Peter said, you are the Christ. Based off of new information, Jesus walking with him, God giving him new information. Watch this. And J Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my father who is in heaven has given you revelation based off the new information and therefore your name is no longer called Peter. May I say, but I will call you Peter. Rock led to transformation. Let me run that by you again. When new information comes in, revelation is possible. And when revelation is, is revealed, you can be transformed or you are transformed. You, you can't you, you, new information. I use this example. And so when you when you are dieting, if you don't know where you're starting off at when you're exercising, you have a goal in, in mind where you're trying to get at. You need the information to know where you're starting at. But the new information is where I need to cut back on calories. I need to exercise. I need to do cardio. I need to do resistant training. You with me? And the new revelation becomes um, when I consistently give my body the nu nutrients it need, give my body the exercises it need, the resistance it need, it leads to my body being transformed. Are you with me? And so strongholds then have this tendency or have the, the propensity um, to not allow new information com com to come in. And so many people who don't allow new information to come in um, are still bound with old ways of thinking, old ways of thinking. Nothing new can come in and nothing old can go out. That's a stronghold. And so that's a tendency to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm free in my mind. Not when we have the old way of thinking. Listen, it's not that you are saved. But you can be stuck, stuck in an old way of thinking. And so in this day and age, we use streaming technology. We stream music, we stream uh, movies, uh, we use streaming services. Um, Blockbuster, which was a reality. I used to work at Blockbuster when I was a teenager. Um, we had um, DVDs. Well, in this day and age, those who are still trying to function off a DVD uh, technology are far behind because of streaming services. If you can remember Netflix um, when it first came out, they used to mail um, DVDs to you in the mail. That was an old way of thinking. But then they came around and they decided we're going to stream stuff through the tablets, on your phone, on your TV. And a lot of folks left when Netflix came out with the new information. But when over time, people start realizing how quickly they can get the technology because they transform or this new technology was revelation on how we can do things better. And it transformed the way people handle movies and how people watch TV. Well, I'm saying to you, you cannot be an A track player, a CD player, a DVD player in a world that is screaming because if you if you do. You get stuck or you get left behind. And so we have to change the way that we think in order to be a part of what God is doing in the now. 
God don't want us stuck with what used to be. What used to be was necessary to, to get you to where we are now. That God has always taken us from glory into glory. And so then we can't get bogged down. Watch this. With old ways of thinking. That we've created this deception, this imagination, or we've allowed the enemy to plant seeds in our mind, seeds in our hearts that is stopping us from becoming all that God will have us to become. I want to say this to you tonight. You cannot be conformed to this world. What does it mean to be conformed? It means to think like the world. And when you think like worldly people, Paul is right here in the book of Romans to would-be believers. He's saying you're a believer, so you can't stop thinking like the world. You're saved, but your mind is still worldly. Your mind is still carnal. You're still struggling with these strongholds because strongholds feel good to you. I'm going to say this and I'm going to end. So in, in Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man 3 to be exact, there's this black substance. It's called a semi-yoke that when it gets on you it's a dark substance that bounds you it bounds up its characters and it makes them feel good but it makes them destroy things hmm. the stronghold make you feel justified in your emotions it's it's erroneous it is deceptive you have imagined this stuff you have created this stronghold this fairy tale and it makes you feel good inside of this symbiotic suit the dark suit the stronghold Makes you feel real good, but it causes you to destroy things, destroy relationship, destroy opportunities, destroy potential. It feels good, but it's not good for you. Strongholds. You can feel justified and just sit right there in your stronghold and say, I'm not letting anybody in, not the new in. Because I'm going to hold on to this old. They did me wrong. I'm justifying my actions. And now what you have done is created a stronghold for your life. No, the enemy didn't do it. He just gave you the mortar to seal the brick. <laughs> God, I, while you was justifying yourself and while we justify ourselves uh, and our emotions and what we feel is right, what we feel is wrong, the enemy don't build it for you. He just simply give you the mortar while you take the brick and he just help you lay the brick, lay the mortar. He said, that's right. They told you wrong. Here goes some more mortar. Stack that brick up. They did you wrong. Stack that brick up. And now you're caged in in a stronghold by yourself. And Paul says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Transformation is a spiritual process. You have the transformation in the Greek here means more metamorphosis. You have to go through metamorphosis, which is a grooving process of renewing your mind. You have to go through changes to renew your mind. You have to go through stages and steps to renew your mind. You have to go through this process in order that you may prove what is a good acceptable and perfect will of god listen brothers and sisters we're out of time tonight but never out of grace and we're going to pick this back up we're going to be in this series the real battle is between your ears what are you thinking what's in your mind listen tonight before we leave here it is always our desire to see men and women to come to christ to be saved if you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, you're outside the ark of safety. Tonight, you can begin a relationship with our Lord and Savior by simply asking him to come into your life to save you in this moment. Simply say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. You said, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. Lord, I confess you now and ask you to come into my life and be both my Lord and Savior from this day forth. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. And brothers and sisters, just like that, he enters into your heart. But there's work to do. You need to be disciple. You need to be a part of a ministry. You need to be pastored. We would love to have you here at the top to help you to walk in the grace, to help you to walk in the life that Christ has given you. You can't walk this journey by yourself. Bible say you are not to forsake the fellowship of yourselves as some, but you need to come together to encourage one another. We would love to have you to be a part of our membership if you don't have a church home to go further inside of God's kingdom. 
Amen. I'm asking you also those who are online tonight to consider giving a seed, um, giving an offering, being a partner if you're not a member, a partner of this ministry to help us further the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's some great things that are going on at the top and your contribution will help us to take the kingdom even further. Amen. There's ways on the screen that you can give. We're so grateful for your generosity. We're grateful for your time tonight. Now, as we prepare to leave this virtual sanctuary, but never God's grace, it is my hope and prayer that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that the Lord will lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. And remember that I love you to life.